بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور الحمد لله الذي له ما الحمد لله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وله الحمد في الآخرة وهو الحكيم الخبير من يهد لا فلا مضل له ومن يل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد. We begin by invoking Allah. Whose mercy is felt by all in this world, and whose mercy is delivered to those that have faith in life to come. We praise Allah in abundance with as many words and many actions as we can, knowing that those whom He guides, that ultimately they are the ones who receive guidance, and those who have not been guided. Ultimately, will not receive guidance. Guidance is in Allah's hands, in the power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and affirming that He alone deserves worship, and that He has sent messengers and prophets throughout time, and that this process has concluded with the coming of the One who was referred to. These are very important titles, by the way. As the seal of the prophets, title number one, and mercy to all nations, rahmat to the alamin, title number two. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ba'ad. Last week, and really, and maybe in some other recent occasions, we have been highlighting particular uh, aspects of the teachings of. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In fact, the khutbah from last Friday, well, the title of it was Muhammad, the best leader, the best leader. And so there are some other things that I want to look at that we want to look at today to explore today. But before that, let's get an idea of what Arabia. Was like what Arabia was like. Arabia, Jazeera al Arab, Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula, was largely a tribal-based society. And yes, it had idolatry in it. Uh, they also had, as, as, a, as an expression of their idolatry, among the things that used to happen is that there would be people who would make tawaf. Or the circumambulation of the Kaaba, because the Mushriks they respected the Kaaba, they would circle it naked. This was among the ways they used to do worship. They used to circle it uh, in, uh, naked, uh, public nudity, in this uh, kind of worship. They would famously worship food items such as dates, such as dates, and those. Would, is, those children who used to come to Sunday school or who come to Sunday school remember the example that I've always given is the example of a cereal box that imagine that that you were worshiping the cereal box and then when it's breakfast time you eat a bowl of cereal imagine making that your god but this among the things that used to happen in their in the society at that time and uh, last week last week we actually read. The the majority of the speech of Sayyidina Jafar 
Ibn Abi Talib when he was speaking in front of the Abyssinian royal court where he was giving these descriptions of what Arabia was like this is his lifetime when the Prophet was living he comes to reform this society and how his speech is showing how or giving examples of how uh, the Prophet's teachings had impacted him and had impacted the Muslims In addition to that, and, and again, this is a gloss. This is not fully detailed. This is a gloss. But in addition to this, those who were from uh, the poor parts of society or from unwanted tribes, they were ignored. And especially poor people, they were ignored in the Arabian society. This was a society that practice what is called female infanticide. And female infanticide is a practice which unfortunately still happens in some places in the world where if, they, if the mother gives birth to a female, they will kill the female, they will kill that baby. It's called female infanticide. So it was a society that had many fundamental defects which is why it is appropriately, appropriately called the Age of Ignorance. Asul Jahiliya, the age or the time or the era of ignorance. It's a very appropriate title for the time. So keeping all of these factors in mind, and there are many other factors, not just the religious factors, but keeping all of these factors in mind, wouldn't it make sense that people who were born into those circumstances, that were uh, climatized to that, to that to those circumstances, it wouldn't it make sense that a great deal of them would have what you call defects? Wouldn't it make sense? Of course, it would make sense that such people who who emerged from those circumstances, those backgrounds, that they have problems? It would make sense. It would make sense. Now, in this time, or in that time, in that era, emerges the one who was referred to as the seal of the prophets and the mercy of all nations. <coughs> هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم. Allah says, يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لا في ضلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحق بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم. Among the words that Allah says. Describing his prophet, alayhi salatu wassalam. But I actually want to reference another text. That one just just came to, randomly to my mind, but I actually want to reference another text. Understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicated to this person, the one whom he calls the seal of the prophets and the mercy of all nations. Allah communicated to this person. It wasn't something that he was making up on his, on his own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him communication to help him, to guide him to fulfill his role. To fulfill his role. And that communication, of course, is the Quran. That communication was meant, or is meant rather, to again to benefit everybody who is willing to take a look at it, who is willing to benefit from it, who is willing to listen to it. So, in the backdrop, in the cultural backdrop, or as a social backdrop that we have just shared, now we come to yet another ayah. Another ayah in which 
we read, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةً مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you, talking to the Prophet wasallam, it is of Allah's mercy that you were kind with them, that you were lenient, excuse me, that you were lenient with them. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. If you have been cruel, this is Allah talking to His Prophet. If you have been cruel or hard hearted, harsh hearted with them, they would have abandoned you. Remember the background, the backdrop. The, the, the social backdrop that it is given. So the text continues. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ, do certain things. He says, do grant them forgiveness. Make istighfar for them. And involve them in consultations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his prophet. And again, there is a context which I haven't explained yet, but there is a context behind these words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his prophet that it is actually Allah's mercy. They made the Prophet the man he is, the man, the man he was. It is Allah's mercy that made him the care and to have the character the, the way that he was, that made him to be linta lahum, to be a, a lenient and an understanding of them. And now the, the immediate context. The immediate context, which generally the Mufassirun all agree, I don't know of any disagreement among the Mufassirun, the immediate context was that you had Muslims in a battle context, in Uhud, particularly, in Uhud, that they didn't obey orders. Right? They didn't obey orders. They were told to do something, and they didn't do it. They didn't obey orders. And yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to His Messenger, how should He react? He says to forgive them. And use an expression in American English, forget it. Forget it. Let it slide. Let it slide. And He says, to make istighfar, Allah tells them to make to the Prophet ﷺ, to make istighfar for them. And finally he says to make them feel uh, involved. Make, make them feel, uh, don't isolate them. In other words, in other words, the Prophet is told, uh, so, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to, to the Prophet, To be understanding. Again, I've mentioned all this background. Allah tells the Prophet to be understanding. To remember the sort of environment from which people emerged. And make them feel like, this is very important, the most important part. Make them feel like, make people feel like, human beings, worthy, worthy human beings. Make them feel this way. Because at the end of the day, those three steps, having forgiveness, having forgiveness, making istighfar for them, which perhaps I will explain on another occasion what istighfar is. 
and making them feel involved. These three steps have long-term benefits. These, again, these three steps, they have long-term benefits. Here comes one of them. Here comes one of them. Don't make people feel like they are trash because they make mistakes. Don't make people feel like trash because they have imperfections. They are, they are not perfect. Allah says, work with them. Really. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, work with them. Allah tells His Prophet that, and that is exactly how His Prophet acted. This is precisely how the Messenger of Allah acted. I mean, there are so many examples of this. One example this uh, comes to my mind is Khalid ibn Walid. He was a, he was a, he was a commander in an enemy uh, force. At Uhud, that did so much damage to the Muslims and others as well. But he is somebody whom Allah gave light to, and the Prophet accepted that. And he becomes, he becomes known after this. I'm sort of skipping details, but he comes after this Sayful Law, the Sword of God. Sayful Law, the Sword of God. But let's circle back to the central point. The Prophet is told to make people feel worthy. The Prophet is told uh, about uh, making people feel worthy and uh, having forgiveness and understanding them. The Prophet's behavior is very different from that which we see in today's world. In today's world, people are treated like garbage if you're not the right race, if you're not the right creed, if you're not, if you'll, if you'll not have the, the funds in your bank account, the right amount of funds, people are treated like garbage, are looked at as garbage, if they don't fit into a certain way or into a certain box or into a certain uh, mold. People are treated as disposable. And, it's, and you think about it, even the modern culture, the modern culture, and we're all guilty of it, disposable dishes, disposable bottles, disposable plates, this, it's all disposable. It used not to be this way. The teachings, the authentic teachings of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I've given just really one example. The teachings of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is showing, is first, first frankly, is the best way to behave. It is the best way. It is the, really the, the best source of guidance. That's a better term. The best source of guidance. Because in a in the big picture, as I've always I often say that Islam is a religion that is for the big picture, not necessarily small picture, but big picture, big picture benefits. The big picture. I mean, again, look at the, the Mongols who invaded the Islamic world. Within a generation or less, these people became Muslims. They invaded the Islamic world and, and shed so much blood. Throughout the Middle East and Far Asia, uh, uh, Far Eastern Asia, or Eastern Asia, that is none other than the power of Islam that was articulated by the one who was referred to as the Seal of the Prophets. That is articulated by the one who was referred to as a mercy to all nations. There is much more to say about this subject, but for now, we pause. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to make us upon the correct way of thinking and and that the source of that ultimately is his guidance as expressed through his messenger Continuing on this topic in business, in politics, in uh, interpersonal relationships, in family affairs. Really, as Muslims, we, have, uh, we are blessed in the sense that we have a wealth of resources that we should utilize, which is summarized or present in Sunnah al-Huda, the Sunnah of guidance, which is present in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I always want to make this clear that, again, this is big picture, not talking about small things. This is big picture. The teaching of Islam, as expressed through the Messenger, the teachings of Islam, it is a practical teaching. It is a teaching of healing. It is a teaching of protection, a demonstration of protection. It's protection from what? Protection regarding what? From one, Shaitan, Satan. Shaitan. Shaitan is out here, my friends. Shaitan is out here. Shaitan promotes immorality. Shaitan, Satan promotes immorality, violence, division between people. It is the satanic agenda, the devilish agenda that wants to see families broken up. And unfortunately, this is becoming a big, big, big problem with Muslims. It is the agenda of Satan that wishes to push us or encourage us to waste our money. It is the agenda of Satan that encourages us to be uncaring, even to those within our own family, to be uncaring, to be unforgiving, to hold on to unnecessary grudges, unnecessary grudges. Shaitan further wants people to be slaves, even if it's just slavery to their own nafs. And uh, I hope I remember the verse correctly. Do you not see the one who takes his lust, his whims as his God? That's what Satan wants. Are among the things that Satan wants. Shaitan does not want to see people progress in their lives. May I ask the brothers to move up a bit? It's getting crowded. Just as a reminder, the social hall has carpets and uh, everything set up if it's too crowded in here. Thank you. So let me continue. So Shaitan wants people to be stagnant in every aspect of their lives. 
And this is not simply theoretical. These words are not just theoretical words. These are not theoretical words. Frankly, 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 it is the same forces, the same devilish forces that are behind weaponizing mobile devices to explode in your pocket. The same forces, the same devilish forces Let's go back to the Prophet ﷺ as we conclude. He was not only the best leader, but he was the most successful in terms of addressing these types of issues that were mentioned earlier. And in instilling in his followers the capacity to uh, to avoid or resist the cause of shaitan. Demonstrating that look, even if people have bad backgrounds and had this problem and that problem in their lives or they can emerge from this uh, social chaos or that social chaos, we need not be slaves to the past or slaves to that. We need not be in the perpetual cycle of loss and destruction. And so what do we need? And we could, in the concluding words, we need to have Iman, faith. We need to have Iman. Intelligence. To follow our religion and its dictates, its dictates says to be, to be careful with our resources. To, to have healthy partnerships, healthy relationships, sobriety, healthy spirituality. These are among the tools needed in order to be successful in overcoming, overcoming rather, what they call traumas or generational traumas. And really in avoiding the, the calls of shaitan, the, 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 the temptations of shaitan. So, it's now some practical parts. Don't be so quick. This is something that we should learn, that we need to learn as Muslims, as human beings generally. Don't be so quick with anger and destructive behavior. If we are invoking Allah every day, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for istighfar, Allahu maqfali, wa astaghfirullah rabbi kulli dhani wa atubu ilayh. If we are doing those expressions every day, and seeking God's forgiveness and protection, if we're doing that every day in the prayers or outside of the prayers, if we're doing that, then shouldn't we likewise have the same behavior with others, with other people? If we want it from God, if we want it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then surely we should exercise the same quality with others. Don't listen to shaitan. Because the shaitan's voice that says it's impossible to progress, it's impossible to be successful, it's impossible to be victorious. That's the, that's the shaitan talking. That's the shaitan talking. And remember, according to the Quran, there is not only shaitan, there's shayateen. There's also, there's, more importantly, shayateen al-jinn and shayateen al-ins. Not just the, the demons from, a, from, a, from, from the jinn world, from the jinn existence, but also among humans. Among humans. Follow the path of the Prophet. Follow the path of the Prophet. Because the path of the Prophet وسلم, ultimately, it is a path which generates safety. Or as the, the, the rewarding of the, the Quran is success.
I have more here, but we have run out of time. So I hope that we get the general points. And the general points is if we can learn from how the Prophet وسلم, acted and demonstrated, then we will be much more successful in life. And not just as individuals, but as a ummah, as a globe, quite frankly. And so we pray to Allah to be among the people who are successful. Allahumma ja'alna min al-fa'zeen. Birahmatika ya arham ar-rahameen. Rabbana atmana na nuwana wa kfana na innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasnata wa fi al-akhirata hasnata wa qina a'adab al-nar. Rabbana la taj'amna ba'al al-fawmi thalameen. Rabbana la tuzir qulubana ba'ada if hadaytana wa hablana min laduka rahma innaka anta al-uhab. Rabbana innaka jami'a al-nasi li yawm min la rayba fi. إن الله لا يخضع معد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين رب العالمين واقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مأكولا